Hello, my name is Patrick Harper, and the title of my capstone presentation is Roots of Change, Actions Plant Conservatories and Botanical Gardens, also known as Plant Knowledge Institutions, can take to share plant knowledge in more culturally inclusive ways. So PK PKIs provide access to global and local plant knowledge through direct interactions with plant species with goals of education and preservation. Although PKIs often only include Western science-based research methods and classifications, which instill harmful colonial ideologies that contribute to the erasure of indigenous knowledges. And they, this colonial history has been um, perpetuated by PKIs, um, essentially uh, reclassifying and contributing to the reclassification of these local endemic um, plants, further distances um, these plants from the local indigenous knowledge that surrounds them. Uh, PKIs have the potential to approach research efforts and projects that advocate for more perspectives and cultural inclusion within their institutions. So two research questions that um, follow throughout my, throughout my capstone were, what current steps are being taken by PKIs to include indigenous knowledges? And what research methods can be utilized to provide plant knowledge in culturally inclusive ways? I interned with Friends of the Conservatory, a nonprofit organization in congruence with Seattle Parks and Recreation to support the Volunteer Park Conservatory. I created uh, plant profiles throughout the summer with my summer there. And I attempted to include a holistic uh, view of these plants and include the endemic regions and the indigenous nations in which these plant species are endemic to. I created and distributed a survey regarding cultural inclusivity within PKIs and synthesized 59 responses. I compiled a literature review delving into holistic research methods in educational spaces like PKIs, and I spoke with individuals within these realms of knowledge, such as plant knowledge and um, conservation and cultural inclusivity. I participated in a restoration event at the Burke Museum's vegetation site. And going through my going through my first section of my results section, PKIs are making efforts to include indigenous knowledges within these spaces. Yet a majority of these institutions have not explicitly mentioned steps taken for direct collaboration efforts. And we see that here with these first two graphs where 34 institutions are saying that they have included, they have attempted to include indigenous knowledges within their collections. Yet when 21 responded with specific actions taken, six included direct, um, direct explanation of um, engaging with indigenous communities and engaging with the knowledge holders within these communities. A few of the specific measures taken to include these indigenous knowledge was online and in-person tours, um, indigenous language classifications, uh, ethnobotanical uses for food and medicine and other cultural purposes, uh, developing workshops and newsletters, um, um, so essentially, going forward with these with these results, uh, it's important to prioritize the direct involvement of Indigenous nations and communities when creating projects and including Indigenous knowledges within PKIs with the direct approval from community members, establishing conversations about intellectual property rights regarding documentation and distribution of cultivated Indigenous knowledges within these institutions, as well as applying research methods that advocate for the co-production of knowledge and methods that reflect the cultures of the involved communities, such as the multiple evidence-based approach and the participatory action-based method, method, methodology. So we can see that here with the participatory action research. Three of the main efforts in the inclusionary attempts were efforts to, made to fortify mutual understanding and empower consensual knowledge sharing, actions taken to ensure a safe, respectful place is created for individuals and communities to share their knowledge. The involved members are included in how the research is conveyed and expressed. And additionally, explained um, the, evident, the multiple evidence-based approach advocates for the collaboration among local scientific and indigenous sources of knowledge. This research application provides opportunities to approach collective solutions and collective problems. And this co-production of knowledge focuses on the co-management and community-based management of cultivated knowledge. So kind of reinforcing that narrative that it's important that this is a ongoing discussion between PKIs and indigenous knowledge sharers and to ensure that these knowledge sharers want their information within these spaces and because these are these are essentially harmful harmful spaces and extractive spaces so it's important that 
um, these conversations are held within these institutions. And for my significant and takeaways for my capstone project, sharing these current actions taken by PKIs to include more perspectives within these spaces could potentially inspire more PKIs to adopt similar practices. And also it's important to continue to investigate alternative research methods uh, that advocate for more inclusionary, non-extractive measures of project collaboration efforts. And that's kind of seen in a few of my, a few of the responses in, in, in my survey where um, a botanical garden in California, they, they essentially worked with the indigenous members of the Jamal band of uh, Kimaye and they created a native plants and native people section of their institution and they directly worked with them on nomenclature and classification and they were involved in every aspect of its creation. Now I only heard that from this from the PKI's perspective so I have no idea if um, that is a shortcoming of my research is to provide a um, provide not just a one-sided um, interpretation of this inclusionary attempt. Um, so further research should be compiled to ensure that these re research methods are beneficial for each one of these in involved communities and individuals. And I just wanted to thank um, so many people. It's been such an exciting um, experience to be able to create this capstone project. Uh, thank you to Polly Olson and Sarai uh, Mayor and Niall Kirishi for speaking with me and sharing your knowledge. For Professor Johnson, thank you for your insight. Um, thank you to the people of the Coast Salish Nations for the land I completed my internship and research on. Lauren Moore and everyone at Friends of the Conservatory, thank you for creating such a wonderful space to learn in. And um, the researchers, community members I learned from, as well as my um, wonderful family and friends, I couldn't have done it without you guys. Um, and also, if you wanted to scan the QR code to my left, it is a link tree created by the Duwamish tribe about ways to support support them. And the Duwamish tribe is um, whose land we currently reside on as University of Washington um, students. And um, yeah, so if you wanted to scan that and see if, um, see ways to support them. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to learn more about my capstone presentation and see you around.